Hello, you're watching London Live News. I'm Fumi Olutoye. Here are your top stories at nine. You have just 60 minutes left to cast your vote in this year's general election. Polls opened at 7 a.m. this morning and will be closing at 10 p.m. tonight. Many seats in the capital are expected to have declared a result before midnight. In the last year, more than 20,000 Londoners were diagnosed with diabetes, taking the total up to 452,000 diabetics living in the capital. In London, all but nine areas are above the national average prevalence of 5.9% of the population, with Brent, Harrow and Newham having the highest rates of all. When you register to vote, your details get put on two different registers, the electoral register and the open register. And it's the open register that can be sold by local authorities to any individual or company that wishes to buy it, which may explain why you get junk mail like this arriving at your door. And the only way you can stop this from happening is if you opt out. Parsons Green Depot has been home to several businesses for the last 24 years. Currently, Transport for London owns the land and wants to redevelop it to create 119 new homes, 40% of which would be affordable. No water for almost seven weeks. That's what some residents and workers in Plumstead have been going through. They say building work in a property around Christmas damaged a pipe which has affected the flow of water ever since. Illegal skin lightning creams like this are a major safety concern for Southwark Council. But just what damage does it do if someone was to use it? It's open spaces like Old Farm Park in Sidcup where local residents come here just to go for a run, to kick a ball or even just to walk their dog. But it's these kind of spaces where Bexley Council say it's too costly to maintain and therefore at risk of being sold. Emotional scenes here in Trafalgar Square. I'm here live ahead of tonight's vigil where people will be gathering to pay their respects. So Tim, you're here as part of the rally today. Tell me why you're here, personally. Um, I think two reasons. One, I think that our government has not done uh, enough yet to help uh, refugees. If you think that we have, uh, in the last week, persuaded the government to change their mind, to take up to 20,000 in five years. If I tell you that Germany will take that number in a weekend, uh, you'll see how little the UK is doing comparatively. The Green Party leader, Natalie Bennett, uh, who me? Yes, that's right. As you can see, there are thousands of students here who are here to lobby the government for free education. Literally, you can see there are so many banners and posters here with people who are lobbying the government to give free education, as well as lobby the government in terms of the migrant crisis. And as you mentioned, Anthony, I've got the leader of the Green Party here, Natalie Bennett, who can tell us more about why she's here and also what she would do if she was in power. Natalie, thank you so much for joining us. So if the Green Party was in power, what would you do differently to what the government are doing at the moment? Well, what we would do is introduce, as the march is calling for today, free education. Education is a public good that should be paid for from progressive taxation, not laying the weight of debt on a whole generation's shoulders, which is what we're doing now. Good afternoon. I'm Fumi Ilutoye, live at Whitgift's shopping centre in Croydon, where young people are being encouraged to become a better you. And how do you do that? By joining the army. I'll have more on that in just a few moments. London, as you can imagine, is in utter shock. Paris is just two hours away from this city, so for many Londoners, this is very close to home. Kamina Batmangelid has actually come out to respond to this report today and has called it a product of bias and rumour. So obviously this has actually left a very bitter taste in those involved with Kids Company back last year and of course has probably sent shockwaves across the third sector sex and scandal and struggles for power were the themes in her books. She started writing as a teenager. Her first novel was in 1968 called The World is Full of Married Men. And that, that essentially was a groundbreaking novel because it was very open about female sexuality yeah, yeah. to the point where um, one critic actually called it filthy and disgusting. And some countries had actually banned the book, places like Australia and South Africa. I'm here in Westbourne Park at Panorama, which is the annual steel pan competition, which typically takes place the night before Carnival. Seven bands from London and across the country come here to compete head to head to win the coveted prize of Champion of Steel. Yes, that's right. Sarah just arrived here just under an hour ago where she was greeted by hundreds of her supporters, friends, family, as well as the charities that she has raised money for as a result of this expedition that's called London to London via the world. Good evening. I'm here at the European premiere of Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. And that title does exactly what it says on the tin. It's full of old costumes and it's about the adaptation of the Jane Austen novel from 1813. And if you fast forward 203 years later, you get this movie. And I'm glad 
like to say I have the director of the movie here with me. His name is Burst Sears. Thank you very much for joining us. To tell us how difficult was it to kind of move from the novel, where it came from, to making it into a film? Carnival wouldn't be carnival without a little bit of Caribbean food. OK, what am I talking about? You need a lot of it. So I'm here to speak to one food store owner to see how he's preparing for the big carnival weekend and to see what food we can expect to taste over the next few days. I'm here in the heart of the carnival route, Westbourne Park, to see one particular band's preparations for the big weekend. This particular band has been performing at Notting Hill Carnival for more than 34 years. From what I've been told and from what I can hear, they show no signs of stopping. I'm a big music lover, but I don't know much about music history. But luckily, I've got two of the best tour guides of Soho who can tell me all about it. 